I want to bring in someone who served this nation. And you may have seen her recently for a host of a whole lot of reasons. She just won as Virginia's next lieutenant governor. Winsome Sears is here. Sears enlisted in the Marines at the age of 19 and served for three years as a corporal responsible for quality control and was a journeyman electrician. Winsome Sears is now the first female veteran to be elected lieutenant governor of Virginia, and we welcome her in focus. Good to see you. Thank you, Harris. Good afternoon. I first want to get your thoughts on where the country is right now. I, I talked about the 100-year anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And all that America's greatness is wrapped up in so much of, of the challenges in the military um, journey to get us here, fighting for freedom. Well, this is it. We have a constitution, but if you don't have a good defense force to defend your country, then the constitution isn't going to is going to matter because if you're overrun by the enemy, the enemy simply rips up our constitution and that's it. So, that's why we need a good defense force. We need uh, the money, the budget. We have to make sure that we maintain our equipment. We have to invest in new technology. You saw that uh, China just sent up that uh, hypersonic missile. That shot our, our, our armed forces. It shot General Miley. How did that happen, you wonder? It, we should never be shot. We should never be taken off guard. And, and, yes, and yet we were. So we've got to continue to invest in our country because we need to be America. These are bigger issues that, that flow across our country. You just won an uh, election and now are the lieutenant governor elect of the great Com Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, military is a part of your background. And I've heard you reference it on the campaign trail. I've heard you reference it since. Um, can you talk to us about why that's important for people to know and the example that it sets to have been in a position to lead and, and fight for the country? Well, the Marine Corps saved me, literally, because when my grandmother died, I, I just was floundering. Uh, you know, she was my world, my paternal grandmother, and I was supposed to go to college that August, but she died that July. And I needed a reason to live. And the Marine Corps did that for me. It gave me the discipline that I needed to continue. And then it taught me so much about leadership. You have to earn leadership. As mm. you've heard, uh, maybe, that if you are thinking you're the leader but nobody's following you, then you're just taking a walk. I saw leaders in action when, for example, one, one day we were having an IG inspection. It's a huge inspection. You always want to pass it. It's massive. It's the whole base. And we were working such long hours, and the warrant officer came out and encouraged us to continue. But he got more out of us that night than before because mm. he took off his uniform, put on his, his uh, utilities, and got to work, got dirty. And I learned so much about leadership there. And then, you know, I'm a small woman. But when you have rank, then you move in that authority. But with that authority comes responsibility. And... You have to take care of your troops. So you, you just learn so much. And it's not just the Marine Corps. It's all of our services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing, amazing wisdom there uh, that you've shared, you know, many times on the campaign trail. And, and now it just comes into focus so much more because that leadership is something that people struggle with right now in understanding uh, perhaps there are gaps sometimes. I, I may take some flack today, and I'm ready for it. I grew up military, and I understand that there are times when decisions are made and they are tough and they put our loved ones, um, mm -hmm. people like you, in harm's way, and we struggle with that. But I'm not going to gloss over what we just went through at the end of August in Afghanistan, and I don't think anybody should. And, you know, in looking at that and hearing what you're saying, that if you, if you don't have leadership in mind with those uh, that follow you, then you're just taking a walk. You're, you're, not, you're not being followed right. and, and you're not guiding. Talk to me about where military families might be. And by the way, before we even get into that, Lieutenant Governor Sears, um, Time Magazine, with this headline today, 
A spike in calls to the veteran crisis hotline could signal trouble for the president of the United States. It comes after Veterans Affairs Secretary Dennis McDonough admitted there's been an uptick in vets reaching out for help and the disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal could be behind it. I'm not the only one noticing this. It's in focus a whole lot of places because it's reality. Let's pause and listen and I'll come right back to you. If you think of the crisis that we're dealing with um, out of the summer in Afghanistan, the images from Afghanistan, the stories from Afghanistan, we did see uh, an uptick in concern from our veterans. The kind of the best way to measure that is we had a 7% increase in the number of calls, texts, chats into what we call the veteran crisis line. Virginia's next lieutenant governor is with me now, Winston Sears. Your thoughts. I threw a lot in your direction and just your top line thoughts on any of it. My husband and I were both Marines. And when we saw the pullout from Afghanistan, no rhyme, no reason. And you just say to yourselves, who's in charge? Where is our commander in chief? Because that would be President Biden. And he took no responsibility for any of it. And that's not what a leader does. A leader acknowledges that they made a mistake. You can follow someone like that because you know they've got your back. You know that they've learned from the mistake. And they're going to try their very best to make sure it doesn't happen again. You're putting your life on the line. You're, you're giving your all to the country. And you expect that. It won't be taken lightly. Your life, your sacrifice, the sacrifice that your family back home is making so that you don't have to come back in a box mm. uh, be because of somebody making a mistake, making a political decision, making a, a decision to fulfill a promise where, where there, was no, there was no effort in it. You see, and so this is why you saw such an uptick because the, the, the men and women who fought these wars say to themselves, to what end did I fight? For what purpose? They're using our equipment against us. They're using our technology against us. They're walking in our boots, in our uniforms. This is, and, and what does our commander in chief say? That it's somebody else's fault. You got to have the people who have put their lives on the line for the country. You've got to you've got to care about them. And we did not see that. And even though we are not in the in, in the Marine Corps anymore, in the military anymore, you always feel that because mm -hmm. you, you just know the service that you've given that your your family has given as well. And you want them to care because remember, we always think about Vietnam. I was not during the Vietnam era. But you always think about how the men and women were treated when they came back from Vietnam. They were spat on. There was no respect for their, their lives, the limbs, you know, that they gave. You, you saw someone's head blown off. You, you saw bodies blown to bits in front of you. We used to call that in my grandfather's day shell shock, and we didn't understand it. But we yeah. do now. And the fact that we're still suffering from Agent Orange issues, the fact that we, we have water issues now, that we found in Camp Lejeune where the, you know, babies have been born possibly uh, with, with right. de birth defects because of that, you know. You want to be taken care of because you want to take care of the country yourself. That's why you join. That's why you serve. You know, you have such rich detail because it matters to you. And, you know, in the last few weeks, as, as the nation's kind of gotten to know you because there was this big election in the Commonwealth of Virginia, you know, Glenn Youngkin and yourself coming on board, the, you know, the nation getting to meet you and understand uh, the ideas that you have in mind for Virginia. But these are ideas that are bigger. And, you know, we put the crisis hotline up and it helps to have you, uh, Lieutenant Governor-elect Sears, talk about the sacrifice. And these are difficult things to have on Veterans Day, but our veterans understand. And in fact, mm. you may be reading as I am and, and know people as I do who those Vietnam veterans are part of, and I watched my dad do this for many years, as those who served in Iraq and, and Afghanistan would come home in between deployments sometimes, he would reach out 
and let them know that they were loved and appreciated in a different way, soldier to soldier, sometimes. And I think Marine to Marine, you would understand that. So we've got that crisis line information up. And I thank you so very much for your time today. I wanted to feature you as a veteran today uh, and get to know you a little bit. And next time, we'll talk politics, which I know you, you're rich to do. So thanks for being here and in focus. Thank you. God bless.